you as our Savior, dear God. I pray that we would forget about all the shopping and, and everything about this season, dear God, and we'd remember the real reason, dear God. Be with us, Lord. Forgive us. Lead God direct us. These things we ask in thy name. Amen. 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 Page 566. 566, bottom of the page, Silent Night, the first and the third.
will sing, and after the adult choir sings with the children to come to the front, they will be singing immediately after the adult choir. children's play will be this evening at six o'clock and uh, so if you want a, another blessing uh, come and be a part of that service tonight uh, also I'd like to we've got a lot of comments from folks throughout this week uh, over uh, last weekend's uh, Christmas play and I appreciate everyone that was involved uh, with that as well and uh, you probably notice around all the uh, poinsettias that are around, and these are placed here in the church in memory or in honor of uh, individuals. And I'd like to just share with you about this. And also, if you uh, if you have a poinsettia uh, here, go ahead and take these uh, after service this morning. There's also some that's out around the Christmas tree in the foyer. But uh, go ahead and take these uh, with you as you leave uh, this morning. But uh, these were placed in memory of Ernest and Edna Ertzberger, Irene and Effie Elrod, Boyd Little, Don Little, Merritt Martin, Mildred Martin, Reed and Maggie Kendall, Joseph Sullins, Clyde Martin and Mike Reed, uh, Judy Tisdale, Ricky Parker, uh, Bill McKinney and Carrie Lynn McKinney, uh, J.C. Deal, Doc Young, Jeff Young, Mr. and Mrs. Tom Laney, Mr. and Mrs. W.M. McGuffey, Billy and Leona Nix, Louis and Louise Eberhardt, Harold and Kat Cassie Welchel, Mr. and Mrs. Ned Young, uh, Arvin Gearin, Rachel and George St. John, Larry Tanner, Kevin Tanner, Maxine Hall, 
Sadie Mitchell, William Gary Esco Jr. and Jerry Cantrell, Ray Little, Sherman Smallwood, Mr. and Mrs. Horace Allison, Clyde and Irene Holman, Forrester and Lola Hultsey, Mr. and Mrs. Lee Ruby Glass Sr., uh, Delmar and Fannie Lee, Robert Hatcher Sr., Robert Hatcher Jr., and Danny Beshers. And in honor of Verdell Smallwood, Lex Money, uh, the children and grandchildren of Aubrey and Kathy Hall, uh, Sammy Sullins, Lois Kendall, and also Verdell Smallwood. And uh, appreciate all of these uh, being in here today, and I know that uh, they're a blessing. They really brighten up uh, the church this morning, and we appreciate that very, very much. I want to ask you, if you will, to open in your Bibles to the Gospel of Luke, chapter number 1. The Gospel of Luke, uh, chapter number 1. I'll share with you what God has laid on our heart for this service uh, today. And uh, be much in prayer for the next few minutes as we look uh, into the Word of God. But Luke chapter number 1, if you're able to do so, would you stand uh, to your feet for the reading of the Word of God? Luke chapter number 1. Now I'd like to begin reading with verse number 26. It says, And in the sixth month, the angel Gabriel was sent from God unto a city of Galilee named Nazareth, to a virgin espoused to a man whose name was Joseph of the house of David, and the virgin's name was Mary. And the angel came in unto her and said, Hail, thou that art highly favored, the Lord is with thee, blessed art thou among women. And when she saw him, she was troubled at his saying, and cast in her mind what manner of salutation this should be. And the angel said unto her, Fear not, Mary, for thou hast found favor with God. And behold, thou shalt conceive in thy womb, and bring forth a son, and shalt call his name Jesus. He shall be great, and shall be called the Son of the Highest. And the Lord God shall give unto him the throne of his father David. And he shall reign over the house of Jacob forever, and of his kingdom there shall be no end. Then said Mary unto the angel, How shall this be, seeing I know not a man? And the angel answered and said unto her, the Holy Ghost shall come upon thee, and the power of the highest shall overshadow thee, shadow thee. Therefore also that holy thing which shall be born of thee shall be called the Son of God. And behold thy cousin Elizabeth, she, she hath also conceived a son in her old age. And this is the sixth month with her who was called barren. For with God nothing shall be impossible." And Mary said, Behold, the handmaid of the Lord, be it unto me according to thy word. And the angel departed from her. Let's bow our heads and have a word of prayer. God, our Heavenly Father, as we come in your presence today, we thank you, God, for this day. Thank you, God, for the privilege to gather in the house of God. And Lord, we just come today just thanking you, praising your name. And Lord, just come this way to worship you. Thank you, God, for the gift that you've given through your Son, Jesus Christ. And God, we want to thank you, Lord, for each home and family that's represented here today. God, I pray that we'll all uh, be mindful of what this time of the year is all about, that we can celebrate the birth of the precious Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. God, we love you and we thank you for loving us. We pray you'd speak to each of our hearts through your Word today. Lead us and guide us and direct us through this service today. Pray that your Holy Spirit will have the right way in each of our hearts. And God, we just glorify and praise your name. Uh, for it is in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Thank you so much. There's a verse here in this scripture that has really stood out as we've tried to study this week and, and prepare for this. And this is verse number 38. And I want you to notice a prayer that Mary prayed uh, here uh, in, in verse number 38, it says, And behold, and, and listen to this, it says, And Mary said, Behold, 
the handmaid of the Lord. Be it unto me according to thy word. And the Bible says, And the angel departed from her. Now I want us to think about these verses for uh, just the next few minutes. I'll be very brief, but I'd like for you to just think about what's being said and what has transpired uh, in these verses. Mary was a chosen vessel. She was a chosen vessel for a purpose. If you'll go back through Scripture and study out the Word of God, you'll find that all through Scripture and all through time, that God has chosen individuals for specific purposes and specific tasks. I dare say today that God has a plan and a purpose and a task for every single one of us in this building today. We think back through the Old Testament. You think about Abraham. And you remember how that God called Abraham uh, to get out from his kindred and and to go into a place, to a land that He would show him. And, And you know, God chose Abraham. Abraham was a chosen vessel of God. And Abraham was to become the father of many nations. We think about Abraham, and when we think about faith, we think about Abraham because he is known as the father of faith. He is called a friend of God uh, in the Scripture concerning Abraham. You think of Moses. Moses was a chosen vessel of God. God chose Moses, and He called him uh, to go into the land of Egypt and to lead the children of Israel out of bondage there in Egypt. So Moses was a chosen vessel unto God. We think about King David. And David, even as, as a young lad, and how that, uh, you remember how that he slew Goliath. He took the five stones and he went and he slew Goliath, a great man of war. But David was just a little boy. But he was a chosen vessel of God. He was an individual that would become king of Israel. And the Bible talks about how that God had sought after a man after his own heart. And certainly David was that man. He was a chosen vessel of God. We think about the prophet Isaiah. And if you'll study out the book of Isaiah, you'll find that that Isaiah was a chosen uh, vessel of God. Because through the prophecy of Isaiah, uh, it would talk about and, and, and give to us some insight into the virgin birth of Jesus Christ. It also give us some insight into the suffering that Christ would go through as He paid the penalty for my sin and for your sin. Isaiah was a chosen vessel of God. We think of Jeremiah, another prophet, and how that he was a chosen vessel of God, and how that Jeremiah, known as the weeping prophet, as, as God chose him uh, to deliver a message to the children of Israel, that they would go into bondage, uh, they would go into uh, Babylonian captivity, and they would remain there uh, for 70 years. But in the midst of that message, God gave to Jeremiah and said, but there's coming a day that you're going to be released, and you'll go back back to your homeland. And this took place. Certainly Jeremiah was a chosen vessel of God. We think about Micah and how that Micah uh, the prophet, how he prophesied of many things, but one of the things that he prophesied of was the very place, the very place that Jesus would be born. The very city uh, that He would be born in. And, God, and, and Micah was a, a chosen vessel of God. We think about even John the Baptist. And if you go further down in the Scripture here, and, and a little earlier in this same chapter, you'll find uh, how that John the Baptist uh, was, was born, or, or he was conceived as, as, it, as his father and mother were well past uh, childbearing years. They were on up uh, in age. But, but through God's hand, uh, them being that, uh, this chosen vessel of John the Baptist would be born into the world. And John the Baptist would be the forerunner. He would be the forerunner, preparing the way for the coming of the Son of God. And He was a chosen vessel of God. I think about the Apostle Paul. 
And you remember how that Saul even had made havoc of the church. He had persecuted the church in such, such a great way. But on the road to Damascus one, uh, one day, as, as Saul traveled and had papers in his hands uh, to go and have uh, those that professed Christ, have them cast into prison and cast into jail. But as he journeyed to, on the road to Damascus, there's something took place that day. The Bible said there's a great light shone around him, and there was a voice that came from heaven and says, Saul, Saul, why dost thou persecutest me? And you remember how that, that Saul asked this question. He said, what wilt thou have me to do, Lord? And Paul became a chosen vessel of God. And he would primarily go and preach the gospel message, that message of grace uh, to the Gentile people. And so we see all down through time how that God has had chosen vessels, chosen instruments to accomplish His plan and accomplish His purpose. Here Mary was a vessel that God chose. He chose her as a vehicle, chose her as an instrument, chose her as a vessel to deliver His Son into the world. Jesus would be born through this vessel, through this instrument, this one called Mary. He would be born. The Savior of the world would come. And I want you to notice, we're going to go through some of these verses uh, very quickly uh, today. The Bible says this, that in the sixth month, the angel Gabriel was sent from God unto a city of Galilee named Nazareth to a virgin, a spouse to a man whose name was Joseph of the house of David. And it says, and the virgin's name was Mary. Mary was a chosen vessel of God, a chosen instrument, a chosen tool to be used of God. The Bible said in verses 28 through 33, listen to this. It says, The angel came into her and said, Hail, thou that art highly favored, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women. When she saw him, she was troubled at his saying, cast in her mind what manner of salutation this should be. And the Bible says, The angel said unto her, Fear not, Mary, for thou hast found favor with God. And behold, thou shalt conceive in thy womb, bring forth a son, and shalt call his name Jesus. He shall be great and shall be called the Son of the Highest. And the Lord God shall give unto him the throne of his father David, and he shall reign over the house of Jacob forever, and of his kingdom there shall be no end. This was a message that was given to Mary by the angel Gabriel. And that, that message was this, said, The Lord's with you, Mary. Mary was troubled. Mary had questions. But Mary received assurance. The angel said, Fear not. There's no need to fear. Fear not. It says you're going to have a son. And his name's going to be called Jesus, which means Savior. What was to be conceived, what would come forth from her womb is the very Son of God. It is God in flesh. The Bible said in verse 34, listen to what Mary says, Then said Mary to the angel, How shall this be? Seeing I know not a man. How? She questions how. How can this be? How can this be? I had a, had a man say one time, said if it, was, if it was present day, the Lord would be hard pressed uh, to find an individual that He could use in such a manner as Mary, her being a virgin. I'm going to tell you this. I believe there's still those that have kept themselves. I believe there's still those that are still keeping themselves. I believe there's still those uh, that God can use as a chosen vessel. I believe still that there are those, there's individuals in this building today that God uh, can use and God will use as a vessel uh, for His honor and His glory. There are those that, yes, we've made mistakes in days past, but there are those that through the cleansing power of God that God will take and God will use. And He's still doing that today. And the Bible said, Mary asked the question, how can this be? How can this be seeing I know not a man? Look at verse number 35. The answer comes. 
It says, The angel answered and said unto her, The Holy Ghost shall come upon thee, and the power of the highest shall overshadow thee. Therefore also that holy thing which shall be born of thee shall be called the Son of God. The Holy Ghost... That was the way that, that this was going to take place. It says the Holy Ghost, the Gabriel said the Holy Ghost is going to come upon you. And it says, and the power of the highest shall overshadow thee. And therefore that holy thing that will be born of you will be the Son of God. The Son of God. And just in case... Mary, you have a problem with understanding this. Your cousin Elizabeth (laughs) has also conceived in her old age. And she's going to bear a son. (laughs) Just in case that you have a problem getting a hold of this and grasping this. And look at verse number 37. The fact is this. For with God nothing shall be impossible. Nothing shall be impossible. I thought about I thought about this week. I was thinking about the Christmas play uh, last week, and I, I thought about Jenny. This just kept coming through my mind. What? I mean, that was that was amazing. It just kept coming. Well, what? How can this be? How can this be? And don't you think that that's kind of the where Mary was? Well, what? How can this be? How can this take place? But thanks be unto God uh, this morning, for with God nothing shall be impossible. People scratch their head today, and they say, how in the world uh, can, can a virgin bring forth a child? How can that be? Nothing is impossible uh, with God. How can He live a sinless life? Nothing can, shall be impossible uh, with God. Well, how can the fact that He died on a cross and shed His blood redeem my soul nothing shall be impossible with God how can I have eternal life nothing shall be impossible with God not a thing not a thing and boy I tell you what the fact is nothing absolutely nothing shall be impossible with God I'm going to tell you something. You may be sitting here this morning, never been saved by God's grace. I'm going to tell you this. You might say, well, boy, I've gone too far. I've done some terrible things in my life. I want to tell you this on the authority of the Word of God. There's no case too hard for God. Because there's nothing impossible with Him. If He can save me as a 17-year-old boy, if He can save me, He can save anybody. I tell you what, that night in Mountain View Baptist Church as I sat there and the man of God preached the Word of God and the Holy Spirit of God knocked at my heart and allowed me to know that I was a sinner and on my way to hell, I was the worst sinner that ever been born. That's exactly the way I felt. I felt so condemned. I felt so filthy. I felt so dirty. I felt like I was going to drop right into hell. And if He could save me, He could save anybody. Nothing shall be impossible with God. And that angel tells Mary, far with God, nothing. (laughs) I I like that. Nothing, nothing shall be impossible. With God, nothing shall be impossible. And the last part of this is verse number 38. And this is really what has stood out to me this week is this. It says, And Mary said, After all of this, the Gabriel was sent to Mary... Gabriel speaks to Mary, tells her what's going to take place. Mary questions, and, the, and Gabriel gives her the answer. said, it's by the power of the Holy Ghost uh, that this is going to happen uh, unto you. This is how it's going to take place. For with God, nothing shall be impossible. Notice Mary's response. What is our response today, folks? Listen, think about this. Mary's response, listen. It says, Behold, the handmaid of the Lord, be it unto me according to thy word. 
You know what this, this speaks to me about? It's, it, this speaks to me about full surrender. Full surrender. I mean, just fully surrendered. <laughs> she says, Behold, the handmaid of the Lord, be it unto me according to thy word. Be it to me according to thy word. Mary, it was just a time of full surrender. You know what this reminded me of? This reminded me of the sixth chapter of the book of Isaiah. The Bible said there that Isaiah saw the Lord high and lifted up. And said His train filled the temple. And the very post of the doors moved at His presence. And Isaiah says, Woe is me, for I'm undone. I'm a man of unclean lips, and I live among people of unclean lips. He says, Mine eyes have seen the glory of the Lord. And one of the seraphims came and flew, and with a tong took one of the, one of the coals from off the altar and brought it to Isaiah and touched his lips and says, Thy sin is purged. <laughs> and then all of a sudden, the Lord says, Who am I going to send? And who's going to go for us? And Isaiah says, Here am I. Send me. You know what? Isaiah, full surrender. I believe Mary was right there. Full surrender. Here, here's the, behold, the handmaid of the Lord. Be it unto me according to thy word. Be it unto me according to to thy word. You know, we'll sit in church a lot of times. And have you ever you ever sit in church and you or maybe in a Sunday school class or somewhere and you just hear something and and it just God just drives that home to you and you just sit there and you want to say, Amen. Amen. I mean you you want to do that, huh? Amen. We just want to say, Amen. Amen. You know what that word Amen means? It means so be it. So be it. You know what Mary said? You know what she said? She said, Behold the handmaid of the Lord. Be it unto me according to thy word. It was just like, it was just like Mary said, Amen. Amen. I want to ask you a question this morning. What will we say? What will we say? We, every single one of us, Mary was a vessel chosen of God. Every single one of us are a vessel. If we're saved by the grace of God, we're a vessel chosen of God. God has a task. God has something for us to do. God has something that we can do if we're willing. Will we, will we say, Behold... Here I am. Send me. Behold, here I am. Amen. Let it be accord to me according to thy word. According to thy word. Mary was fully surrendered. God chose her as a vessel. There's nothing. Mary is not to be worshipped. She was a vessel chosen of God. She was a vehicle that God chose to bring His precious Son into this world. To die for our sin, yeah, and also to die for Mary's sin. Huh? Amen. Amen. I'm glad this morning that we can come and celebrate the birth of our Savior. He was born for one reason, and one reason alone, and that was to die. Not because of the sin that He had committed, because He committed no sin but because of the fact that you and I were born sinners, the fact that you and I have sinned, the Bible tells us we've all sinned and come short of the glory of God. The Bible tells us the wages of sin is death. There had to be a death to make the payment of sin. And Jesus chose. He came and He died that death in order that you and I would have an opportunity to be saved. Have you trusted Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior today? Do you know Him? I'm not talking about know about Him. 
I'm talking about do you know Him as your Lord and Savior? That's the most important question you'll ever answer in this life, is do you know Him as your Lord and Savior? I don't know your heart this morning, but let's stand our feet if we would. Bobby, if y'all will come with a song. This is a message God's laid on our heart. If you're here this morning, you're not saved, and God's speaking to your heart, come. You don't have to tell me a thing. You call on the Lord. The Bible said, Whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. If God in the person the Holy Spirit is knocking at your heart's door this morning and you realize you're a sinner in need of a Savior, if you'll come and call on Him for salvation, He'll save you according to His Word. And then you can really and truly celebrate Christmas. You can celebrate the greatest gift that's ever been given. Maybe you want to come this morning and just get on your knees before God and say, I want to thank you, thank you, thank you. For the precious Savior you sent to die for my sin. Maybe you want to come and just thank Him this morning. Maybe you've gotten off track in all the hustle and bustle, everything that's gone on, and you want to come. Would you be obedient to the Lord today? Would you be obedient? You feel the need to come and pray. Maybe you want to pray for our nation. You want to pray for the leaders of our nation. This altar's open. Would you come and be obedient? Uh, to the Lord. Maybe you want to come this morning and say, Lord, I want to surrender myself fully as a vessel in your hands. And I want to say, Amen. Let it be a court to me according to your word. Be obedient to the Lord this morning as we sing together. Bobby, what's your number? Page 550. 550, bottom of the page. Pass me not.
in the heart of every man there's a hunger a thirst for truth that must be satisfied my journey took me halfway to hopelessness but now my search is over for I have found His love, wise men still seek Him through the shadow of night. They search for the light of in Christ and the darkness gives way to the dawn when wise men still seek Though the times have changed, the searching still continues. The light still shines for all who choose to see. That hope was born to shatter Jesus is the light for all who will believe. Wise men still seek Him through the shadow. They search for the light of hope in Christ and the darkness gives way to the dawn when wise men still seek Him. way